Europe is forging ahead with not one, but two sixth-generation fighter projects. First, Britain's BAE Systems Tempest fighter is expected to reach initial operating capability in 2035. Meanwhile, the German-French Spanish Future Combat Air System FCAS, is slated to enter service by 2040. Europe's next-generation fighter ambitions have spurred concerns that there are not enough operational requirements to justify two concurrent projects. As aptly explained by Tony Osborne, Aviation Week's London bureau chief, these fears are largely misplaced. The Tempest program is an attempt to procure a relatively low-cost fighter built on a sustainable, future-oriented platform, much like what the F-35 was originally conceived as prior to the chronic cost overruns and cyclical delays that turned it into what it is today. The FCAS, by contrast, is being developed as a complex and ambitious, as Osborne put it, gold-plated, project that more closely resembles Lockheed Martin's premium F-22 Raptor. First unveiled at the Farnborough Air Show, the Tempest fighter is a core part of London's new combat air strategy, a sweeping military modernization program aimed at creating an interoperable next-generation network of air power platforms. The Tempest fighter is envisioned as an affordable and highly modular platform, able to be configured and reconfigured for a wide range of missions and combat scenarios. Among its more ambitious features is BAE's unique wearable cockpit system, replacing analog and digital inputs with an augmented reality display technology and a slew of artificial intelligence-powered functions. Despite the Tempest's focus on cost-conscious development, there remains the looming threat of logistical and financial overextension. Britain is the only Level 1 partner in the F-35 program, as the Royal Air Force and Royal Navy aim to procure a hefty 138 short takeoff vertical landing F-35 BS. It will be costly for Britain to maintain its commitments under the F-35 partner program, while simultaneously developing and producing a homegrown sixth-generation fighter, with experts estimating the latter program to run at least $32.5 billion. By contrast, the FCAS is a joint development program for a multi-purpose fighter that, over the long term, will phase out both Dassault's Rafael as well as the Eurofighter Typhoon. Although little is known about the FCAS fighter's concrete capabilities, the plane is expected to adhere to the F-35's information fusion design philosophy, interfacing with nearby satellites and other friendly aircraft to generate a dynamic picture of the battlefield. It will also be able to direct compatible drone models to execute a variety of reconnaissance, support, and offensive tasks. In summary, there is little design overlap between these two European fighters and, as a result, scarcely any reason for the two projects to be merged. Nevertheless, there is a broader similarity worth highlighting. The two fighters are too expensive to completely replace their respective countries' current fleets outright. As such, both projects are shaped around an export-driven development strategy. It remains to be seen exactly how the competition for customers between the Tempest and FCAS fighters plays out over the coming decades, but one thing is clear, given the fundamental design differences between these projects, there is no compelling reason why there can't be two European sixth-generation fighters. Tempest is being developed in partnership with Italy and Sweden with service entry targeted at 2035 to 2040. And that is not all when it comes to major changes to the UK's air force and military. Betting on Tempest. The command paper reiterates Whitehall's intention to spend £2 billion, $2.58 billion, by 2025 on the UK's future combat air system program, not to be confused with the similar Franco-German-led program of the same name, which notably includes the Tempest 6 generation stealth jet. Tempest is being developed in partnership with Italy and Sweden with service entry targeted at 2035 to 2040. The paper also evinces the hope of partnering with Japan, which is separately developing its own sixth generation jet. In addition to low observable characteristics, Tempest would feature network sensors and data links, adaptive cycle engines which can reconfigure themselves depending on flight profile, while generating ample electricity for powerful sensors and directed energy weapons and drone control capabilities. Until later in 2020, there had been mounting doubts that the UK defence budget could spare the funding to properly develop Tempest, which likely will entail £25 billion at a minimum. But with the £2 billion seated, the programme will acquire momentum that may prove difficult to reverse. 
one motivating factor. Tempest may represent the UK's only hope to retain an aerospace industrial base capable of independently developing a jet fighter. The mystery of the United Kingdom's F-35 by Tempest aside, the British military currently relies on Lockheed F-35 Lightning II stealth jets for strike and reconnaissance missions against adversaries with modern air defense systems. Additionally, the UK is receiving an order of 48 F-35B stealth jump jets. These aircraft will be flown by the RAF 617 Squadron and the Royal Navy's Fleet Air Arm 809 Naval Air Squadron off the decks of the Royal Navy's two Queen Elizabeth-class aircraft carriers. But as they will not be ready for operational deployment until 2023, meanwhile the Queen Elizabeth is deploying with US Marine Corps F-35B units on board. Originally, London envisioned a total order of 138 F-35s, including possibly cheaper land-based F-35A mode. But the UK's commitment to that number has shrunk as evidence of the F-35's high operating costs has mounted. The command paper casually promises to grow the F-35 force, increasing the fleet size beyond the 48 aircraft that we have already ordered. Grow, yes, but by how much? Currently, the entire F-35 jet fleet appears dedicated to either training or carrier-based operations, leaving few free for land-based deployments. Unfortunately, the British military restructuring is partly premised on leveraging stealthy deep reconnaissance capabilities offered by the F-35 fighter jet. But that doesn't work if British Lightning are mostly dedicated to supporting occasional carrier patrols in the Pacific Ocean.